the um, graph after its transformation. Right, so this is where you end up. So this is where you started, this is where you end up. Based on that, probably, what do these two things do? Transformation. Right, these are transformations. Specifically, has done something to it. Okay, fine. I'm going to add this to it now. Do. 
So it translates in the x direction, yeah? So it shifts up left and right. Cool. So this shifts across. Cool. Sorry, What's that going to do? Sure. Chucks it off. Obviously, if e is negative, it goes left. If f is negative, it goes down. Yeah. Cool. So we've got the same four, the four basic effects as before. Right? Unfortunately, the letters might not line up as nicely. You can change the letters to whatever you want. That's fine. It's just, I just write A, B, C, D, E, F, just so they're in order. But you can change them to whatever you want. It doesn't really matter. Cool. All right. Well, let's start talking about things. Um, let's take the function. Pre-image. This is going to be my post-image. My image. Nothing changes. Right. Okay. Well, we've got to figure out how we're going to write this thing. Now, this will get fiddly and complicated until you figure out what the patterns are, and then you can shortcut a lot of it. But it's going to be slow and tedious now. Okay. What we're going to do is run exactly that multiplication. Okay, so if you want to think of having this down there, fine. I get x by 1 plus nothing for the 0 by y. So I'll do this. y, 0 times x plus 1 by y. Are we happy with those two over that? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes? Okay. Okay. We're then going to add 0 and 0. So we end up with x with and nothing y. else. We end up with y with nothing else. Okay? What happened? Nothing, nothing changed at all. Okay? So this is an identity. Um, so that's strictly the identity matrix, and then this is a null matrix, so it doesn't move. Okay? So even though it looked like something was going to happen, nothing happened. Right, that's your most basic, that's your favourite, because nothing happens. And so, of course, you basically never see that. Right. Cool. Alright, so now we'll actually do something useful. Uh, let's say 2, 0, 0, 3. Cool. That means that this thing, 
must be getting translated into y becomes y prime on 3, x becomes x prime on 2, and that was squared. Happy, happy? Cool, okay. We can manipulate this further to solve for just the y's. simultaneously have x's and y's floating around. Right? Uh, where, sorry, if you simultaneously have x and x prime in the same equation. So here I need to have the primes to distinguish them. But once I got once I sub them in, all of them are primes. So I don't have to keep track of that. So long as I remember that I've already made the substitution. Oh, and uh, so that is the new rule that this has turned this into. So I got this, ran this on it, and ended up with that. Cool. Let's think if this makes sense. Okay. What does that number out front do? Right, stretches it vertically, yeah? yeah? Cool. Okay. Well, where'd that three come from? Three from that? Yeah, that should have stretched it vertically. What does this x divided by two do? It expands. Expands, like expands in the x direction. Yeah? If we go back to this, yeah, all my x's should have got multiplied by 2. Cool, cool? Yeah. That's good. You've got to be really careful with the x direction because it's commonly the reverse of what you want. Just like if it's x minus b, you go positive b. So you've got to be super careful with it. Cool. The good thing about matrices is it does the direction that you would normally expect it to do. But the unfortunate thing is, as soon as you go back to functions, then you have to be doing the reverse of that. So you've got to think. Cool. Alright. Pick some arbitrary thing. Starting with the function root x, I'm going to run it through this transformation, this dilation, this translation, and get some new function. What's this function roughly going to look like? So, what should that do? Flip it which way? The x direction, right? So I flip it that way. What does the 4 do? Stretches it out. Yeah, okay. What does the 6 do? Right, and it stretches vertically. What does the 2 do? It moves it which way? Right by 2, right? What does the negative 3 do? Down by 3. Cool, cool. So you can just look at this and go, yeah, I know where this should end up. Let's see if we figure out where it ends up with the matrix version now. Okay. Cool. Um, Actually, here's what I'm going to do. Oh. Do you guys want to have a go at it first, or it's up to you? If you don't feel confident with it yet, that's fine. Some of you are feeling confident? Okay, I'll give you, I'll give you a run with it. To see if you can get what your new rule is supposed to be. If you don't get it yet, that's fine. I'm not expecting everyone to get it yet. I'm only run through one trivial example and then one actual example. This is an extra thing.
dilates it by six in the right. water. Right, oh, is it that way by six? Yep, that makes sense. Cool, what does the four do? Uh, it's... No, that way. Stretches it out, right, because I'm dividing by the four. Right, so that's going to stretch it out. Well, that's good, except this had a negative four, so we should have flipped as well. Did we flip as well? Yes. Yes, we've got a negative in front of that x. Good. Cool. I've bracketed this to make it easier. X minus two, what does that do? It moves it in the top of the right by two. Yep. And moves down three, moves down three. Cool, so we can be reasonably confident. Great. If you desperately wanted to, you could chuck random numbers into this and into that. So, sorry, let me, let me rephrase that, sorry. Chuck a random number that exists for this, say one, one, put it into this, run this calculation on it, see where you end up, and then check if that set of points works for this. So, I'll give an example of that, because that one a bit too much, sorry. So let's say we put in the point one, one. Okay, I put that in, I'm gonna end up with negative four times one, negative four plus two, negative two. Uh, 6 times 1, 6 minus 3 is, sorry, did I do that right? Yep. Cool, so the negative 2, 3, the point, negative 2, 3, should work for this. Negative 2 minus 2, negative 4, negative of that, positive 4, 4 and 4 is 1, 6 times the square root of 1, 6 minus 3 is 3. Yep, works. Right? It is possible that I float that. So if you're not convinced, you can throw more numbers at it until you're happy that it's definitely working. But the odds of it spitting out of 3 are pretty unlikely. So, you can get pretty confident pretty quickly that it's working. Go. Okay. That's that. Go. Go for the next thing I want to do. In those of those. Sometimes you'll get that. Are they different? No. Yeah. One yes, one no. Yes. Any other take it? Are they the same or different? Different. Are you different? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you covered your bases there, you picked both options. Different. You picked both options in multiple choices, is wrong. They're different. They're different. They're different. Okay, so how could we check? Run it. Right, run it through. Okay, so I get x plus 2 happening first because of the bracket, then times that by negative 4. So negative 4x minus 8 equals x prime. y minus 3 times by 6, so I get 6 this, minus 18 equals y prime. That looks awfully different. Okay, uh, get this into the other way around. So x equals y. Um, which way are we going? Add 8 and then divide by negative 4, so I get x prime plus 8 over negative 4. y is, where am I there? y prime plus 18 divided by 6.
Are they the same? No. Right. No. What changed? Uh, the changed? translations. Right. The translations changed, yeah? Is that surprising? No. Why is it not surprising? Because it did it in a different order. Right, it did it in a different order. So, okay, it did it in a different order, so then you would expect things to change. But why doesn't the um, dilation change? Because you specifically translated first. Right, I translated first. So, not only does the translation happen, the translation gets dilated. Yeah? So, if we look at it, we were going down by three, and then we multiply everything by six in the y direction, so that popped a multiple of six. We were doing what? Um, where'd it go? Four, oh, right. We were going right, uh, to the right by two. That popped a negative four. So now instead of going right, we're going left because of the negative, and instead of going two, we're going eight. Go, go. So just be a little bit careful about those brackets. Usually, this form will happen, but every so often they annoy you and go, oh, I'm going to do this to you just to upset you. Okay? So it's just something to watch out for. So is that correct for the second one, or should... Yeah, it's just a different way of expressing the same thing. Um, so if we wanted to get the exact same result, we could change... Since we know this is going to cop a negative 4, we could make this a negative half and make this a... Uh, half, negative half. So we made both of those negative half. When this cops the negative four, that will turn it into a two, which is what we want to one. Negative a third times six gives you, uh, sorry, negative a half times six gives us negative three. So you can manipulate it so that it still ends up in the same spot if you want. Cool, that's that. Cool. Are we okay with where we're at? Maybe, maybe not. This gets better with practice. Um, cool. I've still not touched this B and C. The B and C will usually only be zeros or ones. Right? And there's a very uh, special circumstance in which we will accept that. Um, so if we'll put this down here. If B or C are not zero, Right? That will both, it will either be both A and D will be zero, or both B and C will be zero in methods. Okay, so we'll get zero, zero, and then we'll do one, one, just with a nice basic version. It looks like it almost flips the Y in the Right, I take X, Y, and you get a Y, X. I'll get, from the top line, I'll get zero X plus one Y, the next line, one, uh, is it the one and x plus I zero y. Inverse. That's my new x. That's my new y. So what's happened? It's become inverse. Right. This is the inverse matrix. Right. The yeah, sorry. The inverse dilation matrix. Right. It turns your x's into y's because this is the exact same as we're saying. X now equals y. Y now equals x. Yeah. For the new. The new x is the old y, the new y is the old x. So in other words, it's like this. It's quite literally the inverse function. So if you want an inverse function, you can just run that on it. You can change these numbers as well, so you simultaneously take an inverse and then dilate it as well, but that doesn't happen too often um, in methods. If you have three numbers in here, you're going to have a bad time because you're almost certainly going to end up with a relation and move it outside of methods very quickly. It doesn't always happen, but more often than not, that will happen. So you shouldn't have three numbers in a matrix if you're doing a dilation. If you do, then check your work. It's possible, because it might happen to cancel out, but very unlikely. So that is 3, 5. Last bit is 3J. Uh, inverse is 3J, which is going to be over here. Okay. So this Okay. So we have. Right. 
we originally had x squared, we ran this dilation, and we ended up with this guy, y equals that. So we had x squared undergoes the dilation 2003, and that's about 3 on 4 x squared. We're all happy about that. Yes? Right. Back here, we had x squared, we ran this on it, and we ended up with that. So we started with that, ran that dilation, ended up with that. Cool. Let's say I want to go backwards. Let's say I know where I ended up, I know what my dilation was, I want to know where I started. Okay, well, I need a way of undoing this. How do you undo a matrix? You can't yeah. divide by matrix. Divide by the matrix? You yeah. can divide by a matrix. I, I just think you can't divide by a matrix. Can't divide by a matrix. Time by the time is by the inverse. Okay. How do I find the inverse of a matrix? A There we go. Okay. So I'm going to call this matrix uh, A, just to give it a map. I want the inverse of A. Right? Actually, better yet. Let's define A as A, B, C, D. A inverse. How do I get A inverse? Say it again. Uh, a D minus, minus BC. A D minus BC. Yeah. Cool. Do we remember what happened here? Yeah. Zero, 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 three. Nope. For, for this. Oh. Um. Switch what? Which one switch? It's C D A B. C D A B. C D A B. C D A C D A B. You want to know how you remember which ones go negative? Those ones. Because they've got the negative. Right? The same things turn up all over the place. Right? These ones just flip position. Great. Uh, so I'll call this matrix N for that. Okay? I want inverse N. Okay. In goes now. Okay. One over. A. Two. 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 Three. Two. Ooh, two. two. Three. Minus Negative. Zero. 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 Open. D. Three. B. Negative zero. Zero. And I'll put negatives on just because. And so. Oh, that's 1 on 6, so I'm just dividing things by 6. So I get 3 on 6, 0, 0, 2 on 6, half, 0, 0, 1 third. Now intuitively, does that make a bit of sense given what our original was? Yes. Yeah, right? This thing says, oh, I'll make it 2 times as wide. This thing says, well, make it half as wide to undo it. Make it 3 times as tall, make it a third as tall. Just to be 100%, let's run this matrix on that, and we should end up back here. Okay, so we've got half, uh, zero, zero, one third, on x, y, in this case, uh, yeah, I'll do that fine. We're not adding anything. We'll x prime, y prime. Cool, okay, so we get half x equals x prime, a third y y prime, switch out, x equals 2x prime, y equals 3y prime, switch color data to see the prime. We started this time with y equals 3 quarters, x squared, y is now 3y prime equals oops, 2 uh, times, oh, no sorry, I did that the right way first. We're going to call open x, which is that guy, to x prime squared. Cool, alright, so we've got 3y equals 3 on 4. I've got this to that, gives me 4, that squared. Cool, 4, 4, divided by 3. y equals x squared, great. This stuff is not immediately obvious and straightforward. 
because this matrix is really up. Okay, but that's three i and j. I fully expect I'm going to get questions for the rest of the class about, hang on, why didn't this work? And that's fine. Okay, this will take you to, like, hang on, the, 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 and you go slow and steady, and that's fine. Having said that, have you got any questions about anything so far? No, we're okay in theory for now. Until then, it's very, it's very much abstract. So it takes a little bit of time to deal with. Leave you to it. Yep. Why three divided by six? Why? Sorry. Why like three divided by c? Why three divided by c? In the matrix. Where? Uh, it's not three. Three. We're in here somewhere. Yeah, like one, two, three, three, four, five, six. Three. Three. One, two, three. Why is three divided by six this? So if I simplify that, I get one over six. Yeah. So I've got one six multiplied all of this. Yeah. So one, six, one on six multiplied by three is three on six. Thank you. 